Hey everyone and welcome to the first episode of my new LEGO train automation project and this is going to be one heck of a project. I'm going to build an automated container terminal. Now the magnitude and complexity of this project will be the same as the coal terminal. So I expect that I will be working on this project for months to come. So that means a lot of work in progress episodes. But I hear you think like, yeah, well, that's nice, nice and well, but um, in the meantime, don't we get anything from your main channel? No, I'm busy with a sort of small set of Lego animation series, which, which contain a bit of stop motion. And while I'm building this container terminal, I will be uploading those animation videos to my main channel. So my fans don't have to wait for like five or six months before I upload something again. But that's something else. It's um, so the animation series aren't completely train or uh, train related. Uh, maybe you like them, maybe you're not. Uh, we'll just have to see. Um, if you don't like them, it's fine as well. Then I won't do it again. <laughs> All right, back to the container terminal. So let's have a look at the layout first. This is the layout that I came up with. And uh, what you can see here are two cranes, crane one and two, that unload and load the containers to the trains. And then the containers are transported by monorail to crane three, where the containers will be placed in a container yard or something like that. I don't know yet. So what I'm gonna try to do is uh, make a system that unloads and loads a bit at the same time so you get a lot of traffic a lot of moving containers at the same time so why the monorail system well that's because i like monorail um, it's vintage and i like vintage stuff in lego world that is so this is a monorail thing i'm gonna explain this since not everyone knows the monorail system and when these two are in the middle like they are now, you make uh, a passing monorail stop. This way you can start it or make it go in the other direction. And if you twist it around like that, then the same thing happens from the other side. So it goes in that direction or in that direction. Um, now the problem is that I need to motorize this to make it all automated. So that was, uh, that was the main challenge for the monorail, motorizing this and make sure that I can use it in my automated layout. So I tried different things, I tried pneumatics, I tried linear actuators to twist this around, but you need quite a lot of force to do it. And I used also normal motors, and in the end I could make it work, but it didn't work very well. I stumbled across a website on the internet, it's called 4D Bricks, and this is not a selling video, because I bought the uh, stuff from them just in their Bricklink store and they sell servo motors for monorail. So I thought why not buying some of these servo motors instead of making a whole system by myself. So that's what I did, so they are on the way and uh, when they arrive I'm gonna have a look if they work nicer with this system than a normal Lego motor does. So for now, we park the monorail issue until I've received the servo motors. And if it turns out that I cannot make it work properly, then I'll just skip the whole monorail system and I go to another system like conveyors or whatever. So for now, we pull this away. Now, what you see here is a proof of concept of the gantry crane that I want to build. Uh, don't look at the structure here. This is all temporary, it's just to to get this to a certain height, that's it. I'm gonna need these parts for my Saturn V launch tower anyway, so, all right. <laughs> this system is a bit different than normal. A normal gantry crane uses strings to move a container up and down. And I thought like, I can use strings, but it's a bit uh, boring maybe, and I wanna try something else. So that's why I developed this scissor lift system in with, with which I can um, pull up the containers. I'm gonna demonstrate that in a second. So the, the main downside of this system is that it is a bit wobbly, as you can see. But as long as the table is steady, as long as the floor is steady, nothing will happen. Uh, it's wobbly because I had to use P3 
pins without friction and that's why they give a bit of more mechanical play and that's why it's a bit wobbly. So I'm gonna need to check it out in, um, in real life with a train to see if this actually works or not. So I'm gonna show you now how it works. I got this compressor here. Um, I used it for my call terminal, but it's getting a bit old so it doesn't produce as much pressure I, as I would like. In the beginning, uh, with the call terminal, it produced about 40 psi, and that was also the uh, set point for him to shut down until the pressure was dropped until, I don't know, 30 psi, something like that, and then the motor started again. But now it doesn't reach the 40 psi, so the motor continues to run. So that's just a little warning. I'm gonna turn it on now, and so you have the motor running continuously. And in the meantime, I'm gonna show you how this thing works. So let's go, let's put it on here. I already put some pressure inside in the system. So it's on 28 now, that's enough. So I can make it go low like that. Crap, of course that happens now in the video. <laughs> I can release the clamps. Okay, there we go, it can go up again, and that's why you see that it lacks a bit of pressure, since it needs to retract the whole thing. And I can go down again, I can grab it, build up some pressure to make sure that it grabs tightly, and I can make it go up again. And here you see very, very clearly that you need at least, I don't know, 40 psi or something to, to make it go up faster. In the end, it will reach the final position, but it takes way too long. So that's where the new compressor comes in. This is an old compressor. It uses the old pumps from the uh, Chlorix set, which is uh, like 20 years old as well and uh, two of those pumps are inside here and I'm gonna build a new pump with these things that come from the uh, new set, the Arox set and I'm gonna build four of these inside the new compressor I've bought uh, several of these air tanks extra to have some extra spare air and um, I think that compressor will be strong enough to make this all work pretty nicely so you can also use these hand pumps for a compressor, I've done that also. But the downside is that when you have a lot of counter pressure in here, it takes a lot of force to make them go around. You can use an XL motor for that. But the problem is that the XL motors will produce an electromagnetic pulse uh, because of the force of this thing. And because of those spikes I get uh, microcontroller errors like uh, um, spontaneous resets, stuff like that. So that's why I don't want to use these for the compressor. So I'm going to stick to these small ones. So um, that's about it that I can uh, tell you about this project. Please let me know what you think of using the monorail system. That's something I really would like to know from you guys. Do you think it's a good idea to use it or not? And the other thing is, what do you think about this scissor lift system? Do you think it's, uh, it has a chance to make it to the final design or do you think it's, it's too wobbly or uh, don't you like the looks of it? Let me know, share your thoughts. So if you have any ideas, share them with me. Do not comment yet on the speed of this crane since this is an old compressor and when the new compressor has arrived, has been built, I'm gonna show you once again how it works and I hope it works better by then. So share your thoughts, thank you for watching, if you haven't subscribed yet please do so, thanks for watching, bye!